welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's question is, do you know about the unique features of the passion narrative of Matthew? Uh, Palm Sunday, or Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion, as it is called today, uh, begins Holy Week, a whole week devoted to reflecting on the passion, death, and ultimately ending in the resurrection of Jesus. Um, on Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion, the readings, uh, the gospel reading is always the passion narrative according to the lectionary cycle for that particular year. In lectionary year A, we proclaim the passion narrative according to Matthew. Um, now, as we all know, in order to understand the unique features of Matthew's passion narrative, it's important to realize what the Gospels are and what the intent of the authors were as they wrote the Gospels. Gospels are written for a particular audience, has particular needs, concerns, situation, context, and they try to address those situations, needs, in terms of the story of Jesus and the narrative of Jesus. So Matthew's Gospel is written for a community that is uh, primarily a Jewish community that has come to believe in Jesus as the long-awaited Jewish Messiah. They are, they are in tension with a whole other group of Jews who, are, who do not accept Jesus as the long-awaited Jewish Messiah, and therefore there's tension between them. That tension is reflected not only in the Gospel, but it's also reflected in every component of the Gospel, especially the Passion narrative. So it's important to look at what are the, uh, how, how are the various features of Matthew's Gospels expressed in the, in the Passion narrative, and what are the unique features that are unique only to Matthew that do not show up, show up in any of the Passion narratives? Uh, let's focus on the image of Jesus in the Passion narrative. For Luke, uh, I'm sorry, for Matthew, uh, Jesus is the faithful Messiah, the long-awaited one, who is faithful to God and continually seeks to do God's will, uh, obedient to whatever he feels God has called him in his life. And in that, in uh, being called uh, to be uh, faithful to God and always obedient to God's will, uh, even if it leads to getting him into trouble or even if it leads to death. So uh, Matthew presents Jesus as continually faithful, that doesn't go back on his uh, uh, vision and his call and his image of God and calling the Jewish people to reform their lives and to renew their commitment to God. He is one who's faithful to the covenant promises. In the Passion narrative, um, the overall tone that, set, that um, uh, Matthew wants to set up is that Jesus is willing to go to his death even at the cost of his own, um, his own life and his own mission, not knowing where it was going to end. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Matthew, following Mark, uh, has Jesus on the cross essentially proclaiming, you know, one of the final words of Jesus on the cross is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Feeling the, the feeling of isolation and despair that God is not with him or has abandoned him to this kind of death. And yet, uh, we do know that um, Matthew's Jesus is quoting Psalm 22. And if you read Psalm 22 in its fullness, you realize that it isn't just a, 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 a psalm of feeling abandoned by God, but the psalm ultimately ends in trust and confidence as a God who, no matter what happens in life and the difficulties that one faces, even that, uh, God is there to restore you and God will support you and there's trust in God that God will ultimately rescue you. So that Jesus is still, you know, feeling as if, God has abandoned him, and yet trusting completely in God at the same time. Um, uniqueness, the unique stories that only show up in Matthew's Gospel, there are a number of them. The death and the, the, the death of Judas uh, by hanging, that's unique to, uh, to Matthew's Gospel. The dream of uh, Pilate's wife about uh, you know, uh, counseling her husband, Pilate, not to have anything to do with this man because he's innocent. That's unique to Matthew. Um, Pilate washing his hands of the guilt with regards to Jesus and what happens to Jesus is unique to Matthew as well. Uh, guards set up to, to tomb are also unique to Matthew. 
And finally, uh, the, the things that are unique to Matthew is there are four kind of op apocalyptic signs that occur at the very death of Jesus on the cross as the veil of the temple is split in two rocks and the earth shake, uh, graves are open, saints come out and, and after the resurrection actually go visit, go to Jerusalem and visit people and so on. These apocalyptic signs are uh, unique to, to Matthew at the death of Jesus. So what is Matthew trying to convey to us? Well, first of all, he's trying to present the disciples' uh, weakness and failure in abandoning Jesus, even though Jesus remains constantly faithful to his mission and to God. Um, Judas, and, uh, Judas and Peter are the two apostles that are highlighted in Matthew's Passion. Judas um, betrays Jesus and despairs, even though he, he feels sorrow, he despairs and decides to hang himself. Um, Peter uh, also rebukes, uh, betrays Jesus and yet somehow feels repentance for his ultimate reconciled. So uh, two, two models of discipleship in there. But overall, disciples fail Jesus in their weakness and they, they have little faith, as Jesus said through the gospel. The other big tension that exists is there seems to be in this gospel a bit of anti-Jewish, especially anti-Jewish leaders who conspired with the Romans supposedly to do Jesus in. And so we get the flavor of this tension that exists in Matthew's community between those Jews who accepted Jesus as the Messiah and those Jews who didn't. And finally, the last unique feature that shows up in Matthew's gospel is that Matthew focuses on the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus as the pivotal turning point in Jewish history in which the whole, Jewish, the, the whole of Jewish history has now taken a turning point in where Jews are now, in and through the presence of the Jewish Messiah, now focused on uh, the light to the world and becoming a new way of recognizing who they are and how they interact with the world. So I hope this has helped to get to know just a bit about the unique features of Matthew's Gospel. And uh, as you celebrate Passion Sunday, uh, the, uh, whenever you, you do go to church this year, uh, as you celebrate that, pay attention to those unique features. Read the gospel ahead of time and pay attention to it. It's being proclaimed on, on Palm Sunday, the Lord's Passion. Thank you very much, and I hope you will return once again to more Do You Know series questions. Thank you.